guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always Headphones Neil bringing you a quick episode for this week just because it's kind of one of those things that for the first couple of reviews it's going to be a work in progress kind of review because I'm still in the process of watching one show the other one just started but the third video review is going to be um, of a movie that I was really anticipating watching and as it turns out it's already on streaming so I gave it a watch and then I'm gonna round it out with an update from last week and an update on the video game review. So to start it off this week I actually made a lot of progress on Star Trek Deep Space Nine in my watch through for the episodes related directly to the Dominion War. So this particular set of episodes takes place pretty much all in season six. It's related to the Dominion's occupation of Deep Space Nine, their alliance and tenuous relationship with the Cardassians, and then the ultimate um, or the final retaking of Deep Space Nine leading up to now what I assume Season 7 is going to be all about as far as the actual war with the Dominion. So overall it was an actual pretty good season as far as the build up to the conflict, um, the Federation being kicked out of Deep Space Nine, and the Cardassians and the Dominion holding Deep Space Nine, but the people who, of the Federation who actually stayed behind coming to realize that the agreement, their relationship and all of that that they had come to form as, or the alliance that they came to form was not as strong as they're portraying it to be. So all in all a good season. Um, I actually for the most part also really liked the character progression of Gold Dukat, but there were times where um, it felt like his the weakness he had for his daughter was played up a little bit too much so it was a very weird thing where it felt like his character was really good and it's not that he doesn't have feelings for his daughter but it was one of those things where it felt like um, it was two distinct characters and it was really hard to tie them all very nicely together so I don't know it was all kind of weird for me but overall I liked his character in this season Prior seasons, it felt kind of like Villain of the Week, but they kind of turned it around for this particular season, so I'm kind of curious to see um, how that changes or what they do for Season 7. So with that being said, I am going to start heading into Season 7 because I will be having to watch most of the season for the actual Dominion War. Um, I don't know if I'll get it all watched in the next week. But I'll give an update next week as far as at least the early episodes before we head into the final 10 seasons. So um, look out for those reviews for the next couple of weeks. Um, so with that, um, this past week, Fear the Walking Dead's final season, season 8, premiered in the form of episode 1, Remember What They Took From You. So this is actually kind of, not necessarily evenly split, but the introduction of the episode is... Um, Morgan and um, Alicia's mom um, going to Padre, continuing from what where season seven ended, and learning a little bit more about what Padre is all about, even though he's just a voice on the speaker. Um, we do end up jumping uh, seven years in advance and seeing a little bit more of what Padre is all about, the camp that they're living in, and all that he's trying to build. We see a young girl named Ren who's having not necessarily doubts, but you know, kind of on that precipice of doubt with what she's doing there versus wanting to fit in with everybody else and do what Padre wants her to do. Um, she ultimately meets up with or finds um, Alicia's mom being held in captivity. They make their escape. Um, the biggest problem I had with the episode was how conveniently they found Morgan so when they're out in the swamp a guy randomly shows up and it happens to be Morgan 
they spend both, most of the episode trying to explain all of it as far as him being in the camp. He's finding um, kids for Padre, but only kids who have lost their parents or parents who give up their kids willingly. So that all was kind of fine, but because it happened all in one episode, it felt really, really rushed as if they're trying to compress the season. You know, normally it's a 24 episode season down to 12. And, um, or even something that may have happened over, not just necessarily a couple of seasons, but something that would have been built up over the first half of a season into the second half. So, or even into multiple episodes. So because this all happened in one episode, that is kind of the starting factor as far as a precipice of the convenience of tying the first half of the episode together with the second half. Um, even if they made it the end of the episode, it would have been something that um, would have been a little bit better instead of something that happened right in the middle of the episode. So while I enjoyed the episode on the whole, um, we find out what Morgan has been up to. Uh, we have a little bit more backstory on Alicia's mom and all of that. Um, and then the other thing that was kind of weird was how quickly they revealed and figured out um, that Ren was Morgan's stepdaughter, which one of those things that would have been better served at the end of the episode or into the next episode to further progress the story. But I think because this is the final season and because they're it's a 12 se episode season instead of 24, they're kind of compressing that stuff. So they explained it all the way and they can now move on. So it's kind of okay, but it was just kind of weird for me. But overall, we'll see how they're going to build up into build into that confrontation with Padre if we ever figure out who he is and what's going on and how it ties into the uh, Walking Dead universe um, or the larger Walking Dead universe. So with that, um, that will be a weekly rewatch. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a weekly update or not as far as uh, a quick review or how much I'm going to review. But for now, I was thinking I'll do a weekly, you know, quick, you know, two minute review or something of what I thought of the episode. If it was particularly good or better than usual, I'll say so. If it was not as good, I'll say that as well. But much like how it's going to, because it's going to be a weekly week update, I'm going to review or reserve the final review until the season is actually done. So with that being said, um, this past week I found out that the movie Renfield was released and is available for streaming. This is the movie that's starring uh, Nicolas Cage as Dracula and then the guy who played Beast from the latest versions of the X-Men movies plays Renfield. And from the trailer when I watched it, saw the trailer months ago, I was like, I really want to see it. Nick Cage as Dracula looks really entertaining and fun. And in general, I got a good vibe out of the movie. It look, looks like a comedy, so I wanted to see it. Now that it's available for streaming, I did so. And overall, it holds up as far as it was that kind of good, entertaining fun that I was expecting the movie to be. Um, it's all from the point of view of Renfield. They tie it together very nicely with the 1931 Batman, or not Batman, but the 1931 Dracula. Um, they superimpose uh, Nick Cage's face onto some of the scenes. Same thing with uh, Renfield. They do some scenes they did, some scenes they didn't, but I think because the characters look close enough, they, that's why they didn't do every single scene. But in general, overall, it was a very good movie. Uh, we have uh, Renfield kind of depressed in a funk as far as um, being servant to Dracula, wanting to escape. And in general, we have the movie goes to aims towards that goal, and the entire movie is to set that up. We have some ba um, tropey bad guys. Um, so think of the bad guy's son as um, Theon Greyjoy from the John Wick movies, kind of that level of um, bad guy ness. Um, the main head of the bad guy organization is the lady who plays. Um, Avalara, Avalasara, the lady, the main lady from The Expanse who, um, you, from the first season, who was the main uh, big lady of uh, prominence. So when you're watching it, all just take it as a, as a grain of salt that it's going to be a comedy rather than a serious flick. That probably is evident once you realize that Aquafina's in the film and it's going to be more on the com comedic side. But overall, her character, um, Nick Cage, Ryan Renfield, all of the characters work well together. They play off each other nicely. 
And it's just a good, entertaining, like 90, 96 minute film. So not even particularly long. So when you're going through it and watching it, um, it, I mean, for me, I enjoyed it. They tied it again at the end to um, the final closing credit title card for the movie. They did it in the original Dracula style, but in color. So in general, if you like Nick Cage, if you're, if you want just a fun movie that, um, kind doesn't necessarily exceed expectations when you watch the trailer it fulfills expectations and is a generally funny film then give it a watch it's i i think it was only getting like 50 or 60 percent on rotten tomatoes or something like that so um not very highly rated but in general if you want a fun film or you're a nick cage fan then um, exactly what you um, expect the movie to be is what you'll get out of it so looking at it now, it's 57% with the critics on Rotten Tomatoes and 79% with the audience. So that's generally about right. The audience rating, you're gonna, it's gonna fluctuate depending on the person. If it were me, I'd probably give it closer to a 85 or 90% um, grade. Is it high cinema? No, but um, is it fun and entertaining? Yes. So that's kind of why I give it a generally positive grade. So that's all there is for the reviews for this week. Um, I don't have anything of particular note as far as anything Android related, but I did want to give an update on my learning of things related to KDEM Live, especially with my review last week. So um, I went for a quick you know, hike last week. I went on a new trail and I got to thinking that I wanted to take that opportunity. So if you follow my YouTube channel, you see I put these quick, short, you know, minute, one or two minute uh, moment of Zen videos up um, on the side just of, you know, just nature walks kind of thing. So I got to thinking that this is a new trail I'm going on. So I wanted to take the opportunity to record some videos and use my what I learned on Kden Live to merge them together into one big video instead of having a three-part video or a four-part or whatever number of videos I took. So I went into Kden Live. I had a couple of pictures, so I used that as a starting point. And then I added some videos at the end. I practiced using some fade in and outs, overlapping the videos in, um, as well. So when you are going from the second picture to the first video there's a fade out at the end and then at the same time there's a quick fade into the video and i did that across the videos as well um, i also did a fade in and out of audio because i realized that or i got to wondering why when i was editing the video why i couldn't use this fade in and out it was giving me an error message and i realized that there's one fade in for a video and one for audio so i implemented that as well um, and then I wanted to also see how long it would take to export the video in 4K 60, 60 frames per second. Um, so because my laptop, and it's, it is a laptop, is now I want to say like 7 or 8 years old, it did take something like 15 hours to export the video. So just kept, I started I think in the evening or early in the late afternoon on one on like a Sunday. It was done if, um, compiling and um, rendering the video the following day or following morning so when it was done I uploaded the video that was a normal process for something like a 27 gig video so um, that is an internet connection related issue and not necessarily KDEN live or video related but basically I started the upload when I went to work by the time I came back it was done and converted and processed and all that so overall the process worked um, it was a success even though it was a day and a half long process for me but um, everything that I wanted to do worked the fade in and out the fade ins and fade outs worked nicely so I was happy with all of that so in the show notes for this particular episode I'll have a link to that video so it's a nice one one big long like 16 minute or 17 minute video so you can see how that came into effect um, the videos were recorded on my OnePlus 10 Pro um, it was an overcast day, so the colors for me were not as good as I was expecting them to be, except for the final one, when the sun did finally come out. But that wasn't really the purpose of the videos. I wanted to get the videos recorded and then merge them together, so that part was a success for me. So I thought I would share that creation since I did have one put together. And for that, I'm going to use what I learned there for um, video editing going forward, but in general, Kden Live is, 
or if I was to uh, summarize what KDEN Live is, it's the video editing version of what Auto, um, Audacity does for audio editing. So if you've ever edited an audio file for a podcast or music or anything like that, Audacity is really simple and easy to use for personal purposes. Um, for more professional needs, it may do what you want, it may not. But Kden Live does that same thing that Audacity does for audio, but for video. So if you want, if you have a bunch of home videos that you want to merge together, you want to create a photo slideshow, then Kden Live is actually super easy to use. You can create a photo slideshow, video slideshow. If you have your own background music that you made, let's say whether you made an instrumental track on a piano, you sang a song that you wanted to share with some pictures, then you can do that. So Kden Live is that open source version for um, doing what you want to do to create a video. And you can the video that you export from Kden Live, as you'll see with that um, video that I uploaded, is something that you can upload to YouTube. So it is YouTube and um, social media site friendly. Um, I will assume that because it worked for YouTube, it will also work for sites like Twitter and Facebook. Quality that they support will um, change based on those platforms, but whatever you see in general for Kden Live, you'll see in YouTube as well. So I will play around with that a little bit more, but I just wanted to share that um, news, update, um, what I found, and basically um, share those findings with you guys so that you can see kind of what um, I was able to do. Is it the best, you know, Marvel level of stuff? No, definitely not. But for a personal level uh, and amateur level of photo editing and video recording, um, that's what I came up with. That's what I did for my first pass. So um, it is there. Um, this week, I also had a chance to play it a little bit more um, Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, I did start a mission or continue a mission of finding this mysterious uh, murderer. So um, after the first couple of um, steps in that mission, I did need to um, go online to find uh, walkthroughs and tutorials for how to proceed with that mission because I wasn't sure where to go with it. There was not necessarily anything mapped to go to like all the other missions, so I kind of wanted to finish that mission before I moved on to other stuff instead of doing the whole exploration side of it. So I did find where to go for the other two for the rest of the mission so I could finish that up. Um, the final boss fight was intriguing because I had trouble defeating him, but then I saw that my level up meter was near to the next level, so I found some soldiers that I could defeat and level up. So once I was able to do that, I was able to defeat the boss in the mission that I was on and move on with the um, more other stuff. Uh, notably the um, Seraphim, I think it's called. Um, so you'll see those videos in the um, um, up on YouTube now as well. Um, so basically what your, the sum, the short of it is I was able to move on into um, the Sarah, Scarab is what I was able to progress into. Um, so essentially Assassin's Creed is continuing to hold my interest, but every so often there's those random missions that are weird and difficult to progress. Um, and I'm not above going on to, you know, YouTube and Google to find videos and gameplay and tutorials to find out how to prog uh, progress. Is it Was it hard for other people as well and that sort of thing? But now that I was able to move on, I was able to find, defeat another um, person as far as moving on with the story. I liked the little bit of um, uh, gameplay as far as playing as um, your character's wife, Aya, I think her name is, um, going in and finding the Romans. So I thought that was a particular interest and note. So um, with that being said, now that I'm able to move on to other missions, I'm going to continue continue to continue the gameplay. But overall, so far, so good. I'm still enjoying it. I still enjoy the graphics and the leveling up. Um, I think it is time to upgrade some of my equipment again, so I'm going to be doing that. But Overall, it is fun, and I'm hoping by the time I finish it that um, Star Wars um, Jedi Survivor, I think, the sequel to uh, Fallen Order, I hope that shows up on Xbox as well, but if not, I'll find something else to play. But so far, I am enjoying Assassin's Creed Origin quite a bit, so you can follow along with my amateur gameplay on 
YouTube as well, but so far so good. Story's interesting. I can't wait to see where this particular story leads. So that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, um, feedback, or anything like that, you can find all the social media links up on the uh, website at headphonesneal.reviews, which also has the subscription links, ways to support the show, and all of that good stuff. If you want early access to the episode along with an ad-free version of the show, be sure to support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a special update for patrons this week or next week, but um, if you are a patron, then definitely look out for the patron, or subs uh, you can still sub um, subscribe to the Patreon to get the, um, early access to any content that I have, you know, jumbling about in my head. So if you want to get access to that, to that stuff, definitely support the show over on Patreon. Um, as well as early access to whatever I'm up to and things like that. So uh, definitely do that. But all of, the, all of the links can be found on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode. And until next time.